Member for Saanich North End Islands. Mr. Speaker, in British Columbia, inequality is on the rise. I'm not talking about income inequality, which is a huge issue unto itself. I'm talking about wealth inequality. The gap is visible in our housing market. For decades, we've treated having safe, secure housing as a privilege, not as a right. As a result of the commodification of housing, those who are lucky enough to own real estate see their wealth growing, while those who do not own their own home are struggling to keep up with the rising costs of living. This government has been reactive by investing public money to decrease some costs, but in reality, we can't spend enough money to make up for the structural changes that are needed to combat the growing wealth inequality that the status quo policy protects. Through your Honourable Speaker to the Minister of Finance, what is the Minister doing to combat wealth inequality? Minister of Finance. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I want to express gratitude uh, to the member for, for the question because uh, I, I too um, am concerned. I think everybody here in this House is concerned about the challenges uh, that British Columbians have certainly been telling us for some time about uh, affordability and about what it means to them to be able to uh, have a family, uh, raise a family, uh, and age with dignity here in this province. And that's why we've taken, over the last four years, significant steps to address that. It's why, Honourable Speaker, we addressed, um, the, uh, from a housing perspective, it's why we brought in a speculation vacancy tax. It's why we brought in the largest investment in housing uh, in, in this province's history. It's why, Honourable Speaker, we removed tolls on bridges so that there's more money in people's pockets. It's why, Mr. Speaker, it's why, Mr. Speaker, we undertook you know, uh, a wholesale uh, revamp of ICBC to make sure that, again, we can put money back into people's pockets, because that's really critical to British Columbians. We're going to keep doing that work because we know how important it is to British Columbians. Member for Sandwich Northern Ireland, supplemental. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. But from what I'm hearing from my constituents and many British Columbians is that uh, while the minister is able to provide examples of what's happening, the actual structural changes that are needed are not happening uh, quickly enough in order to make life actually more affordable. We can talk about life being more affordable, but it's life and affordability is still out of reach for many British Columbians. Entire generations of people cannot afford to live in the communities that they work in. As a result, the business and serv service providers that they work for are chronically understaffed. The housing market is detached from the economic reality of most British Columbians, except for those who have been able to accumulate wealth over decades. The cost of child care is making having children more difficult. The cost of transportation and food are also increasing. We achieved our legislative poverty reductions largely because of actions the federal government took. We need structural changes across a number of ministries, but it starts with the budget from the Minister of Finance. She must remove her reliance on revenue uh, on re real estate transaction, ensure public money is only financing true non-market housing solutions, and coordinate with her colleagues to ensure restrictive community planning and zoning does not further entrench wealth inequality in housing. To the Minister of Finance, Generations of British Columbia need this government to take the bold, progressive measures we're seeing other jurisdictions take. What is the government doing to combat wealth inequality in the housing market? Minister of Finance. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Well, I, I think the members opposite uh, seem to forget about a whole list of other actions that this government has taken and continues to take by eliminating MSP. By, 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 again, putting money back in people's pockets. By starting the largest social program uh, in, in decades and decades with a child care plan. <laughs> Average hourly wages have increased to, to over $30 an hour. Before, in 2017, it was only $25 an hour. Honourable Speaker, that makes significant differences to people. The largest increase in social assistance rates, too, Honourable Speaker, has made a difference for those who are at the bottom, those who have been struggling so hard, Honourable Speaker. We also have the Child Opportunity Benefit, Mr. Speaker, again, putting uh, about $130 up to, I think, um, in people's pockets uh, that really make a difference in their uh, ability to care for their families. We know that there's more work to do. No one is saying that that isn't the case, but we're off to a fabulous start, and I can't wait to continue to deliver for the people of this province. Yeah.